To fur or not to fur? That is the question. Hello, my name is Taltino. So some of you have seen or heard of dino masks. No, not dino masks. These, but painted and furred and all that jazz. I'm going to teach you how to paint one of these bad boys. For this, I'm repainting Aqua. I already have a design I really like and the paints to do it, so let's go. So for those of you who already know all about this, just skip ahead. But this is about what exactly is a dino mask in furry terms. So I'm going to tell you a, a bit, actually a lot, about these dino masks. I've painted about five, which I'm going to show now, four of these five. I've painted five and currently own four of these dino masks. And I have learned a lot from good old experience. So, number one, dino masks are a cheaper alternative to those very expensive fur suits that the majority of furries don't own but think they have to own one to be a furry. Many of these have found out that dino masks are easier and cheaper. They, plus they have moving jaws already. Dino mask premates can be anywhere from 50 to $300 on average, depending on if they're furred or not. Some people have gotten really creative with their dino masks as well. Dino masks can be harder to find in stores sometimes because they sell out a lot, but when they are in stock, I do tend to grab one. They are also quite easy to paint, in my opinion, as long as you know what you're doing. Dino masks are quite durable, and one of mine even survived getting run over with a small crack that never expanded. I never had any trouble with it. I just painted over it to make it look like a scar and carried on. Here, I'll even show you how durable it is. We're gonna go into the good old outdoors. This is where we test the survival. Uh oh. My cat. You're just carrying along with your day, aren't you, you little kitty? So cute. All right, so let's examine the damage, shall we? And the case on, that is not working. So let's see, we have a little bit of scratches here and there, probably from, probably wear and tear from existing for so long. But um, in specific areas, we do have a lot of chipping, specifically on the beak where it was hit the most. Otherwise, you know, other than paint chipping, still operates normally. So, there you have it. There are also different variations of dino masks on the market, which are the Velociraptors, which include blue, a brown one, and a green one. This one was painted on top of blue. And as you can see, it's pretty nice. Then we have Therizinosaurus, big word. These are probably one of my favorites because they look like birds. And they are actually pretty comfortable to wear, to be honest. Uh, we have Sunburst and Aqua, which is going to be repainted today. Then we have the Gigantosaurus, which I recently got and is actually a work in progress. It looks done, but I still have to add some details. This is probably my new favorite one just because it's precious. 
And then we also have a couple more. Two T-Rex uh, Dino Masks, which are, one of them is brown, one of them is green. I have not gotten a T-Rex Dino Mask. And then there is an Indoraptor. So now that we've gotten on with that big hunk of information, I am going to be telling you what you will need in order to paint your very own and maybe even customize a dino mask. So first, you're gonna need a dino mask. Duh, this is what we're painting. The paints needed for the project. This is crucial. If you don't have the paints needed for the project, then what are we gonna use to paint it? Let's just slide that off to the side. Some brushes are different sizes. This includes big brushes, tiny brushes, and in-between brushes. We also need a palette to put the paints in. And actually, this is optional, but I prefer doing this over putting it on a paper towel because it just holds the paints and it's nice to have the paints in this little palette. Then we're going to need something to hold the jaw open, and I'm going to tell you later why we're going to need to do that. It's actually pretty important if you want to preserve the color of the teeth, which, as you can see, I've messed up on. Anyways, now I'm probably going to put it on a time lapse because I don't want it to take too much time, you know, that kind of stuff. Before that, I'm going to put the paint in the palette. All done. We are going to start with our base coat, and what I mean by base coat is just the first layer of paint, because I'm going to use, and since this is a darker color on a lighter color, it's not really going to make much of a difference, so we're just going to take um, black and paint it all over the top and not the jaw. Forgot to prop the jaw open. So, it seems like we've gotten our first coat done. We're just going to leave our brush right here a bit. I'm going to go get some water to put the brush in. So now we're going to add the next color, which I believe is this. Real quick, I'm going to just feel to see if it's... Yeah, it's basically dry. It dries pretty fast, so we don't really have to worry about that part. I was just making sure.
All right, so now we've got the gray done. Uh, took a minute, and now we're going to have to fold it like this to get it to dry. Got to wait for that part to dry before I even set it down. And then we can start on the gold. I, uh, <clears throat> I've been waiting quite a bit, probably too long. And I'm pretty sure that by now it should be dry and ready for the third coat. So I'm just going to All right, so now we're just gonna wait a couple of minutes to let the paint dry so that I can go over it with another coat. All right, so I've gone over it with a few more coats. I've still got to probably go over the yellow with maybe one or two more coats. And then I think we might be done after that. Uh, I might touch it up with a tad bit of black on the edges <clears throat> but other than that i think we'll be done afterwards and i think that coat is done so basically that's about it that's about all there is to painting a dynamask you just have to uh just have to paint it but um a few tips before I go. Number one, please make sure to um, check what brand you're using when, when you're using the paint because some paints don't, like, aren't as well, aren't as good as other paints. I use Apple Barrel, but the black paint is folk art because Apple Barrel was out of black paint. And it actually ended up working really well. So yeah, that is how I paint a dino mask. All right, so that's basically it. Thank you for watching this, even if it is kind of boring. Um, I will see you all later when I release the first episode of Antics. It will be released by Christmas, and that is somewhat a promise. I even shortened the length of the episode just to make sure that I can get it done before then. It is no longer nine minutes, it's more of four minutes. Anyways, goodbye. Woo! I really hope I didn't shift most of the paint. Ha <laughs> ha! Still running!